screenplay credit or either uncredited or under the pseudonym. So that's what he ends up getting is the pseudonym. Even though I, I looked up, you know, some of his other screenplays and he co he wrote the original screenplay for Hannibal, the original adaptation for Hannibal, which then in a process that kind of mirrors what happened to Mammon on Ronin, uh, Steve Zalian comes in and rewrites Hannibal completely. But both of them are given screenplay credit in the, the final the final credits. So it's 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 really weird that the the writers guild rules and who gets what credit and who gets top build and who gets second build. So that's that's why when you see the the credits at, at the end of the film it says, you know, story by JD Zeke and it says screenplay by JD Zeke and Richard Weiss. But I think when you watch the movie you can tell a lot of it was rewritten by Mamet mm -hmm. because it's got the snappy dialogue. A lot of it is delivered by De Niro and his character. Uh, like just like the ambiguity in it. Like that's that's definitely uh, David Mamet's signatures. And to be fair, there are a ton of great lines, especially in the beginning when they're assembling the team. Uh, a lot of De Niro's dialogue is fantastic in uh, in those scenes, and really funny, actually. And super, he's like a super paranoid dude. <laughs> just his interactions with Sean Bean, <laughs> yeah. Like just just the lines of dialogue exchanged between them. It's like, oh, well, that's that's definitely David Mamet dialogue. So the let's get into the plot, or. The, like, the storyline, like I said, it's not an overly complicated film. But there's there's these guys that are hired. As you mentioned at the top of the show, they're all uh, former intelligence agents. Uh, this is the end of the Cold War, so they're basically mercenaries now. And, you know, it's pretty evident from the beginning when we meet all of them that they're They're doing this job for the money. There's De Niro, who's who's American. Jean Reno is is French. Uh, Stellan Skarsgård is, I think, East German. They mentioned they mentioned ex KGB at some point in time. Uh, there's Sean Bean, who's British, uh, and claims to be SAS. We find out later that he's probably full of shit. And then uh, Natasha McElhone, who is who is Irish, and then Larry, who's uh, who's another American. I don't know if Larry was ex ex intelligence officer. Larry just kind of seems like a dude that's you know looking for a paycheck. Yeah, who, who, who he is is never is never really uh, divulged. He's kind of lingering in the background the whole time. Yeah. But yeah, he does. Yeah. Really, he's really good in this. They're they're hired. They are brought to this warehouse and they're told, you know, they're given a stack of cash, and they're told, "This is what we're after." You know, it's this it's this case. We need to retrieve it from these people. This is how it's going to go down. And then the obvious question is, well, what's in the case? But it's like, well, that's none of your concern. What's uh, what's in this case? And like I said, the the case, what's in it is not important. It's the chase around all of this. That's it's the catalyst for the action. But like, it's it's a good MacGuffin, you know, and if anyone is unfamiliar with what the MacGuffin is, it's something in the movie that is the thing that drives the plot forward, even though it, this thing has zero importance. It's, it's what is driving the film, but it's not the important part of the movie. 
And, you know, we've, we've seen plenty of movies that actually have MacGuffins in them. You know, Pulp Fiction is probably the most famous one right now where it's, you know, the case, what is, what is in that briefcase? The, does it matter? It's what drives at least two of those three stories. And Hitchcock was a big fan of the MacGuffin, uh, Repo Man is kind of a MacGuffin movie Mm -hmm. with the, you know, the car and then what's in the trunk of the car. So it's, the case is what these people are after, but what's in the case is always kind of brushed off and, you know, we don't know what's in this case or it's none of your concern. We just know that we need it and we're hiring you guys to get it for us. So we were talking, we were talking about Sean Bean it was really good it's kind of the almost like the squirrely guy you can tell right away that De Niro kind of writes him off just in his interaction with him but Sean Bean as as Spence his character is also trying to kind of posture like he's like he's a, a tougher guy and a more important guy and you know they're they're given they're given these instructions. Jean Renault is as Vincent is the guy that's supposed to get all the the gear for them, the weapons, the clothes. Uh, Sean Bean is asking about weapons, and he's asking you know De Niro. De Niro's he kind of blows him off and says, "Oh, you know, I favor you know a 1911, a 45." And there's just like this really funny interaction between them where he's, Sean Bean tells him that, you know, oh, that's an old gun. And Daniel says, well, you know, it served my country well. And Sean Bean tries to get over on him, too, by saying, oh, well, you haven't done so well in the last few wars, have you? And then De Niro just tells him, well, we don't we don't complain about it like the British do. <laughs> It's just, it's, it's, he has these really funny exchanges with Sean Bean because he sees that he's full of shit, you know, and Sean Bean doesn't really say anything, but then Stellan Skarsgård asks him about, uh, Sheerford, which I believe is the SAS training ground, um, which is like British, British military. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm SAS. And kind of, he, he, like I said, he, he's just posturing. And it's, it's really funny. And then they they have the scene where they go to re- buy the weapons. They go to, you know, buy guns off uh, this real shady group of people. And Spence and, and Sam, De Niro's character, and Vincent... They they go to buy these guns, and the people that are selling them the guns are like, "Oh yeah, half is here, and half is down there in this car in the tunnel, or you know, underneath the bridge. Why don't you come down here, and then you know, we'll give you the rest." But it's it's very clearly set up to be an ambush, and Sam is really the only one that kind of sniffs that out easily. But, you know, Spence, Sean Bean's character, is just very much, I'm in charge, I'm the one, you know, I'm the one that's going to do this, so just give me the money and we're going to go down here. Yeah, he's just and like, then, yeah, don't, he's just like, don't, don't question it, let's just get this done. And, yeah, and De, and De Niro is just telling him the entire time, like, do not go in there, you know, this is a setup, I don't like it. And, you know, sure enough... Vincent goes with him. Yeah, Vincent goes with him, and before he goes into the tunnel, Sam tells him, hey, if anything goes down, grab one of their guys because they won't they won't want to shoot. The if, sni- I, uh, uh, if, a, if there's a sniper, he won't take out... He won't want to hit one of his guys. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so they go into this tunnel, and almost... You know, it's, it's very, it's 
very clearly a shady situation. And you can tell that even Vincent doesn't want to go down there. But, you know, Spence is very much like, we're going to do this. I'm the one that's doing this. I'm the one that's doing this deal. So let's go. And then as, as it's about to go down, you know, there's, I think, a boat passing underneath the bridge and the light catches uh, the scaffolding underneath the bridge and Sam sees a sniper, like he said. So he calls out to them and he, he shoots at the sniper. And then there's this, this big gunfight in underneath the bridge that's pretty brutal because the they hit the kind of like the, the leader of the guy selling the guns the the bigger guy mm -hmm. gets shot and it just looks really awful the way he gets shot and there's a, there's this good gunfight and uh, they take out the, the guys and then they hop in the car and they speed off because the cops are coming and there's a good I don't want to say chase scene but there's a good you know high speed escape excuse me high speed escape through uh, through Paris and then Sean Bean is like super excited you know Spence is excited that I think the line is you know we got the swag we kept the money that's a job well done and he's just like really excited about it And then as soon as as soon as the adrenaline wears off, you know the the color just drains from his face. He has to pull over because he's going to throw up. And it's it's just you know he he is the guy that was sitting there trying to be the alpha, and it's so clear that he's he's not cut out for this work. You know because both both Sam and Vincent are like very cool, like nothing ever happened. You know they're not scared at all. They're not they're not shaken up. But Spence, who was the one that was trying to to act like he was the big dog, is the one that's uh, shaken up by the whole ordeal. So they, they get back to the uh, to the warehouse to the hideout, and then they're talking about this is where this is where this thing is going to go down. You know, we're going to ambush them here, and Spence Spence has his his idea for what to do. And that's basically set up two shooters on either side of the of the street. And then right away, Sam knows, you know, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. And he says, hey, you know, draw the diagram again. What do you want us to do? And Spence is very reluctant to to draw it again. And Sam shows, hey, if you shut up, if you set up two guys across the street from one another shooting in the same direction, they're going to end up shooting at each other. You know, that's, that's bad tactics. So he he's intimidating to Spence, and then he he pushes him backwards into a, a table and then, you know, kind of grabs him almost like in a chokehold. And that's... Or he's asking him about the, the boathouse. I forgot that. He's asking him about the boathouse. You know, what color is the boathouse at, at Hereford? at the training grounds yeah and spence um refuses to to answer him and he's just like oh fuck off and we kind of get into this scuffle and um he sets uh with sam sets up his coffee right yep sets up the coffee and as as he's kind of you know getting more and more in his face spence keeps backing up until he backs up into the coffee And then Sam, you know, grabs him and he says, you know, you, you know, you, you, what color is the boathouse? You know, you, you say you're this guy, you want to set up an ambush, but like, I'm the one that just ambushed you. With coffee. With coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, it's, it's kind of evident that, you know, Spence is not cut out for this work. He's some guy that's, that's trying to pose as a guy. And then later on, you know, Gregor. It was uh, still in Scarsgar's character. Asked Sam, you know, what color is the boathouse? And Sam just replies, "Well, how the fuck should I know?" Yeah. You know, it was it wasn't that he knew the color; it's that he knew that Spence did not know the color because Spence was a fraud. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what the whole point of that scene was. And then, as they're all parting to 
to go to uh, to Nice. Uh, Deirdre, 